had something to do with the case. There is no case. There never was. That is a $700 Klipsch Center Channel. And I have it here in the Little Narber Theater. And instead of using one of these, which you don't know what that is, go watch my review of the THX... I don't even remember it has a model number. It's like the THX 5? Triple, triple X 5 Extreme? And this is their... This is Klipsch's... It's a Klipsch, by the way. This is Klipsch's... Pro series, like you don't find this at Best Buy, you don't find this on Amazon. Although I did find it once on Amazon, and these are a thousand dollars a piece, so it's very hard to buy these. This, however, is available and cheaper than those. Now, the difference between that and that is, while I think this is probably the most amazing thing ever that I've ever introduced into my whole life as a surround sound listener, um, this is more of a how do I put this? It's a kick-ass product. This has a base board. These are not designed to do low end. The one back there is not designed to do low end. Everything has to be carried around by the subwoofer. They're specifically like THX designed to cut off at 80 hertz. This will go down much lower. This has a huge base port. Like, I'm gonna have to tilt it for you to see it. But I can stick my whole hand. Just imagine me taking my whole hand. And it's going right behind you, sliding my whole hand into a square port. It looks like you could stick like, I don't know, a Steam Deck in it. And since this is the new version, this is the new um, Premiere line. Hold on, I will... We are currently watching uh, Dark City. Great movie. Um, this is the Klipsch Reference Premiere. So not just Reference, not just Premiere, Klipsch Reference Premiere. RP504C2. That's why the look. And this one is in Walnut. And you can see, 13% off, $6.99. That is most of the size of my keyboard. That's where this is going to have a problem with people. Is you see a lot of pictures of it in use. They have them like. Hi. Like here. Like you see it sitting underneath a television. Um, that will work. I mean, it is literally sitting underneath a television right now. The only difference is if you don't have a cabinet that's at least a foot deep which for you people in uh, metric land, you're gonna have to do some calculations on that. But if you don't have the space, you're gonna have a hard time putting this in. Now, if it was a little bit wider, I would almost say you have, I gotta give you your, your anime wife who is uh, upside down Project Melody. Um, if you had this a little bit wider, and this is only a 50 inch television for scale representation, no one's buying a 50 anymore. You're certainly not buying a 50 inch television if you're using a $700 center channel. That's just not happening. So I would say if this was bigger, you could just put the TV physically on top of it because it'll hold as much. I could drive my car up on top of this damn thing. Um, here is the grill cover, by the way. Interesting little note, because I'm a little bit like the original, the older version of this, which, excuse me, miss, uh, while I go and I do fancy things. So here... For $339, and I'll link this one in the description if it's still available, you can get the original RP504C. So not the two, not the Premiere, and not 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 the not the what's, what's the reference. Alright, it's not the reference line, it's not the premiere line, it's just the actually wait a second. Reference premiere is just RP. You son of a bitch! This is an RP. Marketing. They spell out the words, it means a total different thing. So you can get the original version one 504C for $340. And you can see it has the Klipsch logo on top and the, the tweeter horn is smaller. This is much larger and I'm not sure if that one still has it. It must because it's a newer feature, but um, this is all rubberized and these are not. These are just hardened uh, plastic. So these things haven't been updated in a decade or more, and I would love, Klipsch, please, upgrade this to have what this has, because as much as I love these THX 5000s, I think they were the THX 5000s, it's coming back to me now, um, to add this tweeter development to one of those would be amazing, because this sounds warmer and more natural. I have a third one of those back there, by the way. <clears throat> but. The way they've designed these, and if you watch the little video and it goes through the whole thing, is 
cabinet bracing, tweeter enhancements, efficiency, super efficiency. So let's go back out. We're gonna go from the older one, which the other colors, by the way, are $419 and $450, um, to the new one, which is $700 straight. Uh, you, I would love to have one of the other ones here to compare to, but I don't. And back to what I was saying, while I'm holding this goddamn grill, see the Klipsch logo? The Klipsch logo, this is, this is going to bother some people, so I'm going to get it out of the way now. The Klipsch logo on the old one was in the center. Klipsch logo on this one, this is too big to fit the Klipsch logo, even though it says pre reference premiere underneath it. It has the Klipsch logo on the upper left. And when you put the magnetic cover on, it still has the Klipsch logo on the upper left. However, to make it fit there, they've tapered this down so it's perfectly fine, perfectly fine, little like 45. All of a sudden it's wider, steeper, and then boom, which means the back of your grill actually starts physically covering the drivers. Uh, and it's like, that's fine. Look, it literally makes zero effect on the sound, but it's there and I know it's doing it. And it's like, oh, just don't put the logo. So this actually, it, it, I think it's a, it's, it slopes from the start. It gets deeper and deeper and deeper and then one speaker and then second. And that was just something that was like, oh my God, I'm gonna kill, start smashing things. So I haven't put this on for very long because I'm one of those people who wants nothing in front of my grills, <laughs> nothing in front of my drivers. Um, so Giant, I'm gonna actually stand it up now I am powering it, by the way, in a weird way. I plan on doing the full review of this Pioneer uh, VSX LX505. I got some, I got some words to say about it, about build quality, sound quality, and the build quality is ugh. build quality on this is insanely nice. So you've got tapered front, the logos, you've got no shown hardware, you've got the beauty rings around it. If we stand it up. Which can I do this without destroying stuff? Hold on. If we stand it up, you'll see this speaker comes with integrated pads made of cork so that when you put it on a surface, it doesn't scratch it. It isolates it a little bit. You might need another thing in the center. If your cabinet isn't perfectly flat, those will, will not work as well. If you have like a hump in it, she weighs like, hold on, I'm gonna pick it up. She weighs like 40 pounds, so this is, this is a this is a big, like, it's big. That is big. I'm powering it externally. I'm not using the 505. I'm running a long-ass RI cable, which is, this is the Italian um, cable. This is one of the subwoofer cables, actually, the locking subwoofer cables, over to a Sabaj A10A so I can control it. Since I want to focus my review on this, I don't want to have to go to the menu. I just plug it in and then just like, all right, lower the volume, raise the volume focus um lo logos and everything down below i'm actually on top of some sound rise stands which i don't think are designed for this but they're working great let's see if i can look at the back before it falls try not to scratch the bottom of it there's your port that i told you is just that's so big yeah the the point of this center channel is it doesn't act like a little satellite and i said this before in my surround sound videos that were dedicated for just concepts and theories in surround sound and i'll reiterate it here the center channel is everything everything if i took away your left and right channels and you were watching a movie you could still watch that movie if i took away your surround channels absolutely you could still watch that movie i could take away your subwoofer still watch that movie won't be as enjoyable but i could take it away but if you take away a center channel well then you're running phantom with the whole there's a subject but if your center channel gets smaller or weaker or not as that's the presentation that's what hits you in the fucking face when when a tank in the movie fury fires its cannon it comes out of the center channel and then hopefully if it's mixed properly it comes out of the left and right and then you hear the echo of it in the rears and the subwoofers going brrr the entire time but the center channel, all the dialogue, all the action that happens on screen has to come from this box. So if you have a surround sound budget in your head right now, $2,000, right? That seems pretty reasonable. Maybe you have a receiver ready. So let's just split that up amongst 5.1. 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0
Point ones are going to be the sub. You want to buy a big sub. I've been pretty much convinced by that HSU that that is like the greatest sub in the world. I actually have the 14 inch clip sub to bring down and fight it. We'll see how that does. But the subwoofer, you're going to want to spend a lot of money on your subwoofer. Fine. You want to spend a thousand dollars in your subwoofer out of your two thousand dollar budget? Fine. Now you have one thousand dollars left for the rest of your sur sur surround setup. Five hole speakers. Honestly, you sat me down, and you, if your concern was only movies and not music, I'd buy this sub center channel and I'd leave three hundred dollars for the for the left, right, and the rears. Because you know what? When you're watching something, this channel and that channel just have to work. Just work. Because everything that's speaking, everyone that's talking is going to be on there. When something goes boom and it flies off screen, yes, that speaker will activate and that speaker will activate. But their qualities, I mean, unless you're going for like, again, we're talking about like a $2,000 budget, which seems high, but it really isn't. Their qualities matter so much less than the center channel quality. If you could average out and have mediocre everything, then you have mediocre everything. Your budget's not high enough to have like exceptional, like these are $3,000 a piece, these clips. So throwing $700 at just your center channel, leaving you just enough money for, oh, I don't know. I would say RB42s, because that's my favorite passive speaker. But um, let's keep in the clip chamois. Yama, S S803s, the little, the little bookshelf, little bookshelves. They won't match at all. And that's another thing. They're not going to match. And you know what? That's okay. Hell, you can get... This is only a 5-inch here. That means... I mean, I'm going to look it up right now. Right now. We're going to do this live. We're, fuck it. We're doing it live. All my stuff's there. Let's see how much the 5-inch equivalent, even the older model of uh, Klipsch is. We'll close this one. So Klipsch... What are we looking for? 5. I'm just typing 5. Klipsch 5. Five, clips five, clips five. Well, the fives are five hundred dollars. Like here, here's an entire eight hundred and fifty dollar five point oh. I'd rather have that in this level than all that other shit and the blends. It doesn't matter. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. They've got so many. Here you go. All those powered bookshelves. I'm looking for the equivalent of this, but unpowered i guess let's see what was the what was the model number clipsh 504 50, 500 let's just look up clipsh 500 no outdoor speakers there what are you why you have no price speak to me so four options from 355 so even the smaller speakers and those are the still the the new rps that and just just the lesser lesser speakers for the left and right if you're doing a center at all so now i got to get into that part where i confuse everybody center is the most important speaker in your surround setup unless you don't use one and you can do that i can't really do it here because if you're gonna with my old apartment i ran a phantom center my old apartment if you remember the screen came down i was probably further back than this and i had the left and rights were not that far apart they were a little bit closer. And it gave me a beautiful phantom image of a center. Just like when you listen to music. You listen to music in stereo, correct? If you listen to music in stereo, then when someone's singing, they comes out of the middle, which doesn't even need to be a speaker there. That will work. If you're very lonely, which was perfect for my old apartment and me, um, you sat in the middle, you got good imaging, and you didn't need a center channel. You got to bulk up your left and right. You got to use them for music. You had giant doom stacks with speakers on top. When you spread it out and you want to add more people to sit and join you with, you need a center channel. But you could just skip a center channel entirely if you felt like it. As long as your speakers are close enough together, like this would be fine. These two, I'm judging these Fluid Image 2's in coming, upcoming review. And I obviously don't need a center channel Fluid. I mean, I kind of do. Come on, give me one, please, Fluid. Um, <clears throat> but you understand how it's working. Uh, so yeah, I'd say... I'd say this is probably the most solid center channel I've heard since the JBL. You know which JBL I'm talking about. The little tiny one. The little tiny horn one. Uh, what the fuck was the model number of that? Because it was the 530s, then the 580s, then the 590s. I think it was a 520C. And that thing was like 
five hundred dollars then it dropped to like a hundred and eight dollars i'm like that's stupid and even though it's only got little four inch drivers it was so clear and precise and you know what that does a horn does that i'm all about horny centers i'm a horny center melody understands horny centers horny centers are the best thing ever so if you're going to invest seven hundred dollars or if you're going to invest in a surround sound system period that I don't know of any, you know what? In the comments, feel free to add, educate me. Because as much as I love home theater, I don't like live in the like research of it. Name some more horny centers. I gotta know. I'm talking about like this type of horn, like actual like horn, like horn, not like a tweeter that has a little bit of a, of a waveguide. I mean a fucking horn. I wanna know. So yeah, I will link to this. Thank you to Clips for sending this out. I, I wasn't gonna give the Center Channel its own separate review, but at the same time, hold on. I love how it's just a woman. Be looking for John Murdoch. Yeah, there's like this surround sound stuff, but everything I'm focusing on is here. Dark City, by the way, it's just a great movie. I wasn't going to give this Center Channel its own review. I was going to combine it and put it like it's a side piece with either the Pioneer or when I get the entire surround sound set up down here. There's going to be... Uh, Clip sent me basically an entire... Let me think. I got Towers. I got Sides. I got Atmos. Yeah, no. They sent me like an entire like 5.1.2. And that's an Atmos receiver, which I have to figure out sealing things because there's no walls to bounce, and this is not a firm ceiling to like bounce things off of it. So it's not the ideal situation for testing a bounce Atmos setup. But I will be testing an Atmos setup down here. The hair of yours, whatever it is that you think you're supposed to do, you didn't do it. I don't believe it ever happened. What do you mean? I know this is gonna sound crazy. He sounds like John Crichton there, and his name is John Murdoch. So I mean, there you go. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sold on Klipsch for my home theaters. I'm just pretty sold on them. Like, I had no intention of this either because I have the Klipsch um, Forte Force, the $5,000 mega box speakers up in my sunroom. They're the best sounding speakers in that room. My theater over here, the the, the big one, if you don't know the big theater, I'll take a little quick, I don't want to wake up the cat. Just let me wake the cat up. Not Fortes, those are heresies. Those are my main left and right. There's swans behind the screen, but there's a heresy to the left and right. And in here, those crazy THX 5000s. Like, they make 6000s. These are a little five inch. They make a six inch. And my brain, like, ugh. But when you're in the consumer end, if you're still going for like, I just want the, the reference premiere line, that's the best center channel they have. And you know what? It fucking sounds like it. So I'm done, you're done, we're done. The bass cut off on that, I could honestly take that down to 60 and be happy, usually 80. You know what, it'll probably do 50. That size of that port. The thing is, I don't wanna give that too much responsibility for low end, especially at that hertz. Just throw it at the subwoofer and it'll be taken over. But yeah, no, links to that. Thank you to Klipsch. Link to the wallpaper in the... The wallpaper hoard already. Um, Stay tuned for more home theater content. I really, I'm gonna straighten this area out a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of these like tower speakers that I've got here. By the way, people that keep asking me, why are these backwards? Go watch my review of the Aperion V8Ts. In the front, it's just black. There's just black vinyl. And on the back of them is like this beautiful, like literally one of the nicest finish on a speaker. So I turned them backwards because that's what I want to see. But anyway, these will probably be coming out. So I have a little more room to move uh, speakers like this towards the wall and I'll do some nice wall coverings like opinions and ideas on that Don't tell me to paint the wall. You never paint a basement wall Because if you paint the inside of a basement wall with the wrong kind of paint Moisture can't leave but isn't that great Zeus? No, no You want moisture to get the fuck out of your cement because if the moisture hits paint and stops your cement turns to sand No one wants that. So yeah, never paint your basement walls That's why when they put like finished basement panels, they're always perforated so air can travel through it and moisture Anyway, I'm done, you're done, we're done. Patreon, subscribe, star. Support this channel. See reviews early. Participate in yard sales, first to the 10th of every month. Get to all the sound demos. I don't really have a sound demo for center channels I could do. 
that'd be kind of weird not off the books though if you guys want it if you're a patron and you want that ask me but if you really want to ask me don't ask me as a five dollar patron go as a ten dollar patron come into the private behind the scenes telegram chat where you can speak to me directly you could message the group with 145 50 members and once you're in that you get into a lifetime swap me channel to buy sell and trade gear with whomever you want and you never get kicked out of that so yeah i'm done you're done we're done together as a go go turkey sandwich everyone leave everyone go get a turkey sandwich we are done here